The first part of this series will just discuss the defibrillator. Many people are not very comfortable working with a defibrillator and they normally fear the machine and uh, will not uh, usually use it in clinical practice because they have not been trained on how to use it. But essentially this video is to make sure that you have a clear understanding what a defibrillator is, how to use a defibrillator and pretty much make you more comfortable using a defibrillator. So, um, so we have this defibrillator with us today um, and the defibrillator essentially the key parts, uh, the key thing behind a defibrillator, it's an electrical uh, device, of course, um, that is used to transmit electricity through a patient's heart to manage a patient having multiple uh, medical conditions. Um, and the first and most important part before you use any defibrillator is you need to be familiar with your defibrillator. You need to know how to check your defibrillator you need to confirm that your defibrillator is functional and you need to make sure that you have all the right apparatus uh, before uh, using a defibrillator now this needs to be done of course it cannot be done when your patient has gone into a cardiac arrest situation for example and that's why your defibrillator check needs to be done every shift change within the facility so whether if you have two shifts then morning shift and evening shift they must always check the defibrillator to make sure that all the equipment is ready and all the defibrillator is ready to be used in clinical practice because there will be no time to check this defibrillator when a patient arrives uh, who needs to use the defibrillator so we're going to go through just basics of how to check a defibrillator um, each manufacturer has a recommendation as to how they want the defibrillator checked and this is usually available in the manufacturer guide to the defibrillator but we all know those guides normally don't make it to the clinical floor they will normally end up somewhere um, in the biomedical department so the key parts of checking a defibrillator is the first part of it is just the physical defibrillator okay so you need to make sure that, that there is nothing overlying the defibrillator there is um no spills no it's not dirty it's not bloody of course for um, infection control reasons um you need to check all the cables make sure all the cables are intact they're not broken because of course this can then cause an electrical uh, short circuit so you check your defibrillator, um, good. So all the cables are in, they're connected. I'm checking my pulse ox cable, all right. I'm checking the cable itself to the paddles. Then at this point, I'll probably check the cable to the power source and I see I'm already connected to power, which is great. Uh, check I have both batteries in place. I will check the paddles, okay. So I need to make sure that the paddles, that they're clean, not pitted, okay? So pitted means this is metal, so you don't want it to have holes in it. All right, so I'll check the adult paddle. And then by clicking, by cli sorry, by clipping off, by clipping off this part, I'll be able to check the pediatric paddle. And again, make sure that it's clean, not pitted, and then put it back. So I check paddle one. And I go ahead and check paddle two again, so it's clean, not pitted. I check again the pediatric paddle clean up pitted. So most defibrillators have um, the adult part of the paddle and also by some modification you'll be able to have the pediatric because these defibrillators are both can be used both for adults and pediatrics. Okay. So other things I will check of course is that it switches on. Okay. And there are no service messages. So service messages is just checking that it doesn't say that the machine is to go for service or something like that. Make sure that it's switching it on and there are no uh, dysfunctions or system errors on the computer or on the defibrillator. It is a computer actually. So if there are any system errors, you'd easily pick up uh, on the defibrillator. Again, you can confirm that the date and the time is accurate. And this is, yes, it is accurate. It's with me. And make sure that is fine. Other thing I'll probably check is do I have enough paper? In the paper chamber all right so i have enough paper in that okay and then for now i'll switch it off um as i go on to check so that's just the first part then the other parts of it before i go into the actual checking if the machine is uh working effectively is look at do i have the supplies so ideally i want to make sure i have a set of pads okay so normally they're in a nice sealed pack so what I'm using now, we already uh, opened one, but ideally, and the pads are not expired. Um, okay, so they're not expired. So pads, again, pads can be used for both adults and pediatrics. Uh, and for this one, you can see the pad says you can use for a child more than 10 kilograms. And then, again, okay, for adults above um, 
for all adults that are used, okay? So we already have a set of pads and we go through how to use these pads uh, on the patient when we get to that part. The other thing I want to confirm is, so for this particular session, I'm gonna use the paddles for now just because I know most facilities, especially in our setting, have paddles. They do not have access to pads because of the cost issue. Um, so most of have access to paddles. So I'm gonna go through the paddles first, okay? And with paddles, then you need to make sure you have defibrillator gel, okay? Now, defibrillator gel is not ultrasound gel, okay? The key difference is, is because there needs to be electricity transmitted from the machine into the patient, then the defibrillator gel normally has some um, electrolytes, okay, that then allow electricity to be transmitted. If you use ultrasound gel, it actually does cause some blockage of the electricity that's getting to the patient and potentially can be harmful. Of course, do not use gels um, that have petroleum products, okay, because then that's a fire, pretty much. Okay, electricity, petroleum, big fire in your emergency department. So you must make sure you're using proper defibrillator gel that has electrolytes that then will allow the transmission. So normal electrolytes in most defib gels is uh, sodium chloride. And if you're brave enough, you can probably just quickly test and see it normally tastes like salt but yeah i'd advise not to test because maybe other chemicals inside the um inside the gel but do not use ultrasound gel ultrasound gel is usually water-based and does not transmit electricity and other gels like um ky jelly and other jellies potentially have petroleum products in it and that could easily cause a fire in your emergency department and definitely of course burn your patient in the process all right so I've quickly just checked the supplies. Now, there is actually a whole complete defibrillator checklist, which uh, will be um, shared with you on the screen and you'll be able to actually just see and can be downloaded from the Emergency Medicine Kenya Foundation website, uh, a whole defibrillator checklist that allows you to then uh, know, go through all these steps. But as I said, the best and most important checklist is the one that comes because every machine is different and every machine uses um, different ways of checking the machine. So go back, to, uh, call the manufacturer, call the supplier, check with the biomedical department, uh, find out the inserts that were available. And in the world of technology, you can also just go online. And by checking the, mo the model of your defibrillator, you'll be able to find the check guide uh, online and shows you how to check. So I've checked the supplies and cables and everything. So what I'm gonna do uh, for this particular machine is I wanna do a, a machine check. Okay, so I've checked all the outside parts of it. I've checked the cables and everything. I've seen it's working, but now I actually want to do a complete machine check to make sure that if a patient shows up and I switch on this machine, I will be able to shock this patient without any issues with the machine. So that's what I'm gonna go do next. And for this specific machine, the first thing normally I will switch it on. Okay. Now the other part of it, so, this machine, this specific machine comes with what we call a test load, okay? A test load is a connection, okay, as you can see. So this is like normally the cable that you use to attach pads with, and I'll show you how to do that later. But it has this component that is a test load that is used to make to test the machine. And how you do that is essentially you go to the point where, so find, so if there's a cable to be attached, especially for pads, the best place to find it is just follow your paddles, where your paddles connect to the machine is where this cable will be connected. So this one is a bit of a twist. I'm able to disconnect the paddles, okay? And then, so I'm gonna connect the test load for, my, for now. Okay, make sure it's well connected. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to menu. Okay, as you can see, it's already detecting. Menu, then I'll go to other. Then I'll go to operational check, okay? I'll click operational check. It says run operational check. Yes, and then I'll acknowledge that, okay? So that's gonna terminate that. Okay, let me remove this for now. So I've gone into operational check mode, okay? And pretty much with the operational check mode, pretty much you just have to follow the instructions. So most machines, all you need to do is follow the instructions on the screen. You don't have to memorize any of these things. The instructions are already on the screen and you are able to just follow the instructions. So it shows my model number, my serial number. It shows me the last time this machine was checked, which was a few minutes ago, because we were testing this before the show. And then, so it just says setup, turn therapy knob to 150 joules. I turn that to 150 joules, and you can see it's automatically now going through a series of tests, okay? So 
how d what's important of this record is if for example the machine stops working during a defibrillation you can easily go back to the system and see was it checked and this has been used in made in medical legal cases where someone says oh the defibrillator did not work but then they were like did you check it and they're able to go back to the machine and see oh this machine was last checked maybe two weeks ago so that on its own makes you liable for prosecution in case the defibrillator didn't work and of course there are bad outcomes for the patient all right so they verify the test load is attached okay so it is attached so it says press the charge button okay so the charge button is on the charge here I'll press it okay then it says press the shock button i'm gonna Not press delivered. the shock button did you hear shock delivered i'll acknowledge and say yes okay so right now it's going through a series of checks okay so these are internal checks and i said every defibrillator every defibrillator must be checked every shift change okay so if you have two shifts in a day in the department then that means you have to check the defibrillator twice okay this is to make sure again remember the treatment for example for ventricular fibrillation is defibrillation so if your defibrillator is not working then your patient potentially will have uh, uh, adverse outcomes and of course this then opens you up for medical legal uh, issues where the defibrillator was not working and there are cases where people have actually won because they just forgot to check the defibrillator so always make sure you're checking the defibrillator at least every shift change all right so as you can see it's passed so it's passed the different checks it's going through um so doing well so far which is good okay so and then ideally you should be checking your defibrillator on battery mode remember because sometimes you're not always connected to power so you need to make sure you check your battery your defibrillator on battery mode but do not forget to reconnect the power because the defibrillator must be fully charged at every given opportunity so always check the, the defibrillator in battery mode to be able to test if the defibrillator will work if disconnected from power there is no use checking the defibrillator in power mode then you move the defibrillator from the power mode and then now you are trying to uh, shock a patient all right so it looks like i've passed most of it okay which is great okay all right good all right so operational check passed so here it actually allows me to print so this record is proof that i have checked the machine okay nice okay and we'll go through what's on the record okay good so i'm gonna cut that off then i'm gonna exit the op check and as i explain this let me just switch it back off all right then I explain all right so okay um this is the whole reset that i get from the defibrillator okay now what does it have on it it says operational check report it gives me the model number because could there be a situation where for example uh this is from a different machine yes that could happen it gives me the serial number okay uh it gives us uh the version of the machine so it tells me the current operational check was 5th May at 11.47. Perfect. All right. The last check. So you're able actually to confirm if the previous shift did check the machine. So the last check uh, was on uh, still 5th May today. So the morning team checked and I've just checked it now. Now, what other things are tested? Okay. So it gives me the current test results. So I'm able to see everything has passed. If there's something that has not passed, then you need to immediately call your biomedical team to come and have a look at the machine because that machine is faulty and uh, may not necessarily may not be um, ideal for patient care okay so i'm checking to make sure everything has passed okay uh passed 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 now remember all the things that i did earlier they're actually here so did i check the defibrillator inspection yes i inspected the defibrillator okay did i check the cables okay to make sure on the connectors yes i did the paddles i checked and the pads yes i checked uh did i look for monitoring electrodes my patient actually has them already on them but ideally they should be readily available batteries i did check there was a battery attached a uh, power cord was checked and it's connected to power and switched on and then printer paper okay we did check that we have printer paper and spo2 sensor which is this one so the spo2 sensor is placed all right and then here i can make any comments and say verified by benjamin washira and then i sign off inspected by now this record needs to be kept safely 
as proof that the machine was checked. So should anyone have any issues about the machine, then they'll be able to verify that the machine was actually checked and they cannot claim that it was not checked um, during your shift. All right. Okay, good. All right. So, all right. So that's, so now that I've finished checking, I'm going to switch back to paddles. Okay. All right. And maybe, um, yeah, this is our setting. I'm going to save on printing paper. So for this particular demonstration, I'm going to remove the paper because um, we really want to save on our paper. All right. Okay. All right. So what do I want to do now? All right. I want to go back. Remember, I'm still connected to the test load. If a patient shows up, I cannot use the test. I can use a cable, yes, and I'll show you how to use that. But I want to go back to where we were at, where we are using. I'll discuss how to use the uh, cable uh, later. But now I want to go back to us having using the defibrillator. All right. All right, good. So at um, this point, so the defibrillator is connected. Uh, power is on. Everything seems fine. And at this point... I'm going to say we are ready to start using the defibrillator on a real patient. Good. That's it for now.